Hey everybody, it's Monika and welcome to my channel where I help social workers, counselors, and helping professionals deepen their level of self-awareness while boosting their competence and confidence in the profession. Now, I've been away from YouTube for a couple of months now and I've not uploaded any videos. So I wanted to give you all an update on where I've been, what I've been doing, and then what you can look forward to in 2021. So if you're interested in learning more, then please keep watching. I'm Anika Thomas, the founder and clinical social worker at Kindred Connections Therapy Center. I've been a social worker for over 12 years. I decided to do an entire YouTube channel on my journey from cubicle working social worker to successful entrepreneur. Welcome to my channel. So a lot of you probably already know that I run my own private practice and I've been doing that since 2018. Um, but one thing that you didn't know is that it was mostly myself and an office manager who was basically running the practice. And that can be very overwhelming for a new entrepreneur. And my practice grew so quickly because I'm one of the only African-American therapists in my city. Um, so in terms of getting clientele and referrals, it just became more than I can manage. And then with COVID-19, I was kind of forced to pivot a little bit with my business. So the NAP had some things change and shift. So I just decided to kind of take a break from running my business full time. And I actually went back to work. So I am working full time and then I'm running my practice part time. Now I know a lot of you, including myself, I'm still an entrepreneur at heart, but a lot of you hear um, things on, on YouTube and on Instagram about getting out of the rat race and financial freedom and living your life on your own terms. And all of those things are true. And all of those things I absolutely value in entrepreneurship. But there's also another side of entrepreneurship that you don't always see or hear about. You oftentimes see people talking about how free they are, how they can manage their own schedule, how they can do things on their own time. But there's also a business that needs to be ran day in and day out that solely relies on your shoulders. So in private practice, you're responsible for scheduling meetings with your clients. You're responsible for your insurance, your billing. Um, you're also responsible for keeping your books in order. So having your QuickBooks in line, um, you're responsible for following up with insurance companies, making sure that all your contracts are current. Then you're following up with releases of information and then contact with schools. If you have clients who um, you're seeing in a school setting, and then you're responsible for following up with insurance companies on requests that they might have for client information and then doctor's offices who might call your practice. So it is a lot to manage. And for one person, and I was myself and an office manager. So between the two of us, my, my practice, again, it grew really quickly. So I just wanted to take a step back from our practice for a little while, just to make sure that I was growing the practice with integrity, that I was growing it in a way that was slow and steady and not too fast. Because it's very easy when you have a, a flow of clients to come in to just continue continue to run your business without looking or making sure that your operations are in place, that your policies are in place, um, that you are creating the culture that you want to develop for when you're ready to um, scale your business. So I just wanted to step back a little bit and be able to take my time to grow my business. One of the other reasons why I decided to pivot is because it, it was really affecting my YouTube channel in a way, um, because a lot of you who follow me, you're not in private practice and you're not even thinking about private practice. You're just deciding if you want to go into social work as a profession and you're trying to grow in your profession. So one of the things that I thought would be helpful if I did go back to work was to be able to share some of the ins and outs of what it's like being a social worker who's in the field currently and being able to talk directly with other social workers about what they're experiencing, how they're developing themselves in the profession, what things are impacting your, your confidence in the profession, what things are you struggling with. So when I participate in different Facebook groups, I'm able to get some of that feedback from you all, but actually working in a agency where I'm able to work directly with social workers every day who are coming into the field new, who haven't taken their licensure exam, who are learning how to navigate case management, um, who are learning how to establish boundaries with clients, who are learning how to find their own voice in the social work profession. So there are so many pieces to becoming a new social worker that I thought would be beneficial to share on the channel. And I knew that in my practice, I was only getting one piece of social work that um, a lot of you, you're not there in your in your careers yet. A lot of you are still working in government agencies. You're still working at children's services. You're still working in nonprofit organizations. So I wanted to make sure that my content was relevant for where you are um, and really helping solve the problems that you feel create a gap in you becoming an entry-level social worker and a social worker who has a heightened level of expertise. 
So with me making this shift, I'm really hoping that it caters my content better to where you all are in your social work career. So something else that has been going on is my channel has been growing. So thank you all so much. I'm so looking forward to connect with all of you. If you're beginning social workers, some of you are still in high school and are expressing interest in the social work profession. Um, and the social work profession is growing. Um, I believe that there will always be a need for social workers. And I think right now with the climate of things in the United States, there's no better time to get into the social work profession. And if you've not downloaded my 101 careers in social work download, I think it'll give you a really good picture of the types of things that you can do in the social work profession. Because a lot of times people have a one dimensional way of thinking about social work. But if you're just now deciding if this is something that you wanna do, I think that download will be really helpful for you. So I'll leave it in the description if you would like to check that out. But ironically, a lot of you are reaching out to me from all over the world, from other countries. So I thank you all so much for connecting with me and a goal of the channel is I want to be able to bring a voice to social work around the world so that's actually going to be a segment that I'm going to be starting on my channel um, which is called social work around the world and I'm going to be exploring various topics that are happening in different parts of the country so we can have a full scope of what other countries are dealing with or how they're navigating social problems within their particular region so I'm really looking forward to that and if you all are interested in that please let me know in the comments if you live in a particular country and there's a social issue that's going on in your area please let me know and that is something that I definitely want to be able to feature on the channel so one of the other areas of the channel that is really important to me is boosting your competence and your confidence hey everybody if you like this video please like subscribe or share it also be sure to click the notification bell because I upload a new video every Monday and make sure you check out the Afrocentric social worker podcast you can check that out on all the major podcasting platforms the link to the podcast can be found below in the description. And that's going to be done through continuous training, education, uh, workshops, webinars, things that are really going to get you prepared to succeed as a social worker. And to be honest, I absolutely had no idea how much some of you were really struggling with your confidence and with your competence. And not because you didn't go to school, not because you, you lack an education, because you lack an insight. It's none of that. One of the things that I'm noticing is a lot of you are struggling in the profession is because you've had supervisors, you've had you've had bosses, you've worked at organizations and agencies that have caused you to question your confidence and caused you to question your, your knowledge and your insight. A lot of you were emotionally abused by your supervisors. You were emotionally ab abused by um, your, your directors and you were made to feel insignificant and that you weren't a good social worker. And that has rocked a lot of your confidence to the core. Um, and, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the job that you're in. It has to do with the negative core belief and the ideas that you're bringing into your profession and it's sounding like a lot of you are being triggered by the way that you're interacting with your boss and with your supervisor. So with this channel, I want to be able to give you all tools, tips, strategies, and techniques to be able to listen and take in the feedback that you're getting from your supervisor and your boss, um, but also have the confidence to move forward in the profession, knowing that your skill sets are going to grow. The social worker that you are today, that's not the social worker that you're going to be 10 years from now. And the profession that you're in now might not even be the profession that you're in five years from now. Um, so I want to make sure a lot of you are not allowing people's ideas and perceptions of how you show up as a social worker to determine the type of work that you want to do and whether or not you feel you're equipped for the work. Something else that I'm noticing is lacking in your professional careers is training and education and coaching and expertise. You all are not feeling as if you're getting that support from your supervisors that you need, that they're not pouring into you, showing you strategy, showing you um, how to be a good social worker, what words to use, how to develop rapport, how to develop relationships. So I'm really wanting this channel to be a hub for that type of information so you can have access to the things that you need. And also, I know that a lot of you are wanting to grow in your leadership, but you don't feel as if you have the avenues and the channels for that professional growth. So that's going to be a big part of what we talk about on this channel is how to learn your leadership style, how to develop your leadership style, how to come 
into leadership, how to lead others, how to influence others, how to use your voice. Um, so a lot of you are using your voice in how you advocate for others, but when it comes to advocating for yourself and asking for the things that you need, some of you are struggling in that regard. So I wanna make sure that I do a really good job of addressing that on the channel. And also with this transition, I think I should be able to do more day in the life type videos. So going into private practice, day in the life is, is nothing fun. It's just meeting with clients back to back to back all day. So with the current position that I'm in, I'm hoping that it'll give you a sneak peek into some of the work that I'm doing. And I actually am in a leadership position. So I'll be able to show you how I plan my day. I'll be able to show you how I manage my team. And then I'll also be able to share with you my leadership style, which is what I call a servant leadership style. So that means I don't take a very top down approach to leadership and management. I'm a very team oriented democratic type of leader where I seek out the voice and the feedback from my team where we make decisions together but I'm very directive in things where we need clarity um, and where we need to push things through to help get things done quickly. And another reason why I went back to work is because there were some leadership skills that I thought that I was lacking as an entrepreneur. Um, and it wasn't something that I wanted to, to gain from an online community or from a Facebook group or anything like that. I wanted to work with someone who I whose leadership I admired who um, knew how to lead, who was smart, was able to command um, respect in the community, who was a visionary. So um, I wanted to know what does it look like to grow and scale a business? And I wanted to work directly um, with the person who I'm working with. So that was another reason um, I wanted to learn how to become a better leader. So with the skills that I'm learning and developing, I'm learning what to do as a leader, what not to do. I'm taking the things from the leadership style that I'm able to see that I think work for me. And then I'm also learning some things that I will wanna do differently. I'm learning how to think strategically and to build a team, to grow a team, to be able to push um, a strategic plan forward. So all of the things that I know that I need to be successful, I'm able to sit under the feet of someone whose work I admire. So that was another reason why I wanted to go back to work. And the thing about this whole scenario that I really want you all to take from this is your journey is your journey. Your life is your life. You can't watch me on YouTube or other Instagrammers or, or anyone else to figure out what journey your life needs to take. You need to decide what is best for you in the moment where you are, which is gonna be dependent upon where you want to see yourself. So please don't think that because I went back to work that you have to do anything different in your life. I can look at a lot of entrepreneurs and, and feel guilty because I decided to go back to work. But there their life journey is different from the journey that my life is on. And just because I decided to step back from my business, it doesn't make me any less of an entrepreneur. It doesn't make me any less of a person. I don't internalize anything about this journey. I don't have any guilt about it. I'm not embarrassed about it. I don't feel like I'm a failure. So if you take anything from what I'm doing now in my life and in my journey, your journey is not going to look like everyone else's. The route that people take to entrepreneurship is going to be different. And I don't know that you'll follow follow too many people who will say that they went back to work. A lot of people are about promoting entrepreneurship, um, having your own business, creating your own life, working on your own terms, which I'm a huge advocate for. Um, and I will transition back to that eventually. But for now and where I am in my life, I needed to take a step back. So don't ever be afraid to evaluate your life and where you are and decide what you need to do for yourself. Don't feel pressured by what anyone else around you is doing about the pace that their life is going and about the speed that yours is going. Do what's best for you, listen to your internal voice and go at your own pace and your own speed. So I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, or share it. I'll be uploading more videos to help you deepen your level of self-awareness and to boost your competence and confidence in the profession. Thank you all so much for the support. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So thank you all so much. Um, if you wanna leave me a message, if you have content ideas, please leave it below in the comments and I'll be sure to communicate back with you. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, be well.